Hi, good afternoon. This is Dave Webster from Webster Consulting. I've got Steve Brigginshaw with me today um, as he's going to show me how to raise a repeating invoice on zero so that um, if you are a directly user, you can automatically send out inv invoices and get paid. Hi, Steve. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thank you. So, um, I thought it'd be a good idea to show our clients um, how to do this. As you can see, I'm sharing my screen at the moment and um, I'd like to re raise a repeating invoice for a new client that I've just um, taken on board. And I was wondering whether you could show me how we can do that. Yeah. So you're in Zero already and you're logged in and you've gone into the sales module. So what you need to do from within here is select new repeating sales invoice. And once that window appears, you'll then have the option to set up how frequently you want the invoice to repeat. So I think we're going to do a monthly invoice. Is that right, Dave? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So you can put any you can put any frequency in here, weeks, months, years, you know, whatever works for you. So we set it up so that it's monthly. The invoice date. So we're we going to use today, Dave. Day, yeah, let, we? let's keep it simple and, and, and use today so what that will mean it today is what's today it's the fifth it's the fifth of july so every fifth of the month this invoice will repeat so by setting the invoice date that's what's going to happen there the due date will obviously be set to your normal payment terms but you can also change this as well so if you wanted it to be on the same date you can or seven days later you can as well so that's really more for the for the client and you can change how that due date is calculated. So whether it's you know, seven days after the invoice date or at the end of the month or seven days at the end of the month and so on. And then you finally have an option to put in the date when you want the repeating invoice to stop. But most people don't know when, so it's easy just to leave it blank and just be mindful that you're going to review your repeating sales invoices each month just okay. to make sure that what's going you know before you do the billing cycle what's it going through as a repeating sales invoice is actually what should be going through and you can either add some more amend some or, or remove some so the next step is to add the customer so if we add the customer name dave i see you jumping ahead there we'll come back to that bit in a moment so yeah if you add the customer name and click on that one it appears so yeah once once you've done that so you can the, the step to do after you've entered all of the description and amounts and so on is to, to go to the radial button. So you've got three options. So this is just below the frequency details. So you can save the repeating invoice as a draft. And what that means is each month on the 5th, it will, and, and today, uh, the one that we're creating, it will create a draft sales invoice. So that means you'll need to go into it, check it, approve it, and then send it. You can click approve. So what that will mean is it will automatically approve the invoice and go into the zero system as a sale in your P&L, but you'll need to send it separately. So go into the invoice and then click the send button, or you can click approve for sending. So what that does, as long as the customer has an email address set up, it will automatically create the invoice, approve it, and then send it directly to the client. So there's nothing for you to do. And that's what I mentioned earlier about checking the repeating list. So if you have any that are approved for sending, that you know what's going to happen there. So okay. actually, it's just come up at the moment. So you can see in the two box, there's nothing in there. So in, what you'll need to do is enter the email address that needs to go in. And then on the client record later on, you can add that as well. But it should carry on going to that e email address because you've set that up. You can also see the template email. And now you can obviously edit this in the email template settings, but this is what's going to be sent to the client. And you want to attach it as a PDF. There's no need to send a copy to yourself. And what's the last option, Dave? I can't quite see. Marcus sent. Oh, Marcus sent. Yeah, you definitely want to do that. So then you know from your system that that's, the, that's already been sent to the customer. So you can click save. So that was set, set up the message. 
once you're happy with everything in the sales invoice, if you scroll down to the bottom and click save. I just need to add the VAT. Okay. So as soon as you click save, because it's going out today, Dave, what's going to happen is it will create that invoice. So as soon as we click save, it will automatically create that invoice, approve it, and then send it to the customer. Excellent. And there we go. Job done. So I just have a quick question. Um, what happens if we do a, bill, um, a time and materials job for that client now that we've set up um, a, a, a directly direct debit monthly payment and I raise another invoice, which is for time and materials work and the direct debit mandate is set up? Does that? get handled as a separate invoice um, where the client can either pay me whatever method they went, want, or does it automatically recognize that there's a mandate set up and take an additional payment to the monthly one that we've already set up? Exactly. So, yeah, you're quite rightly first to mention that because you now have that repeating invoice set up, what Directly will do, we'll pull, we'll pull that invoice into the system on the next working day and then put it through the go cardless direct debit process. So what will happen is if you had a, have an ad hoc invoice for, it could be for anything, as you say, time, labor, whatever it is, you'd raise the invoice, not through repeating sales invoices, but just through the normal sales invoice process in zero. And once that is approved and sent to the client, the directly mandate will take payment for that separately. So it won't lump it together. It will do two separate payments. So even if they were on the same date as the repeating sales invoice, they would still be taken as two separate payments because that's just the way that they work. Each invoice has a, a payment pulled from it rather than having it combined. It's easier to track them as well. So you are quite right with the latter that, yeah, directly will we'll take that as a, a direct debit so um, just out of courtesy then, once you've set up a direct debit mandate with a client for a monthly payment, and as you say, you take an ad hoc payment, it's just worth letting them know that because the mandate's been set up, the payment will be taken the same way as the monthly payment. Yeah, what I'd like to do is in the email, the, you know, the template email that we just saw for the repeating sales invoice, it's just mentioned in there, I'd just say thank you for paying by direct debit, because it just reminds them that they have and they don't need to make a payment separately. That's a good idea. Because from their perspective, it takes about two days, two or three days, depending on uh, whether it's a weekend or not, for the, for the payment actually to leave their bank account. So there might be some confusion for them. But that's what I tend to do. And similarly, you can do the same if it's just an ad hoc invoice. Just so put the same sentence in. Then they know that, that they're paying for it through their direct debit. Brilliant. All right. That's been really, really useful. Thank you very much.